In today's lesson, we look at several objectives. Most importantly, at the end, we will construct and analyze quantitative models involving flows and storages in a system. And just as important, we will evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of models. So let's uh, move straight in and have a look at our first model. And here it is. It's, it's a model of, uh, of a clean energy system. Uh, the first thing we would ask is that uh, why is it a model? And uh, if it's a model of a system, then what is a system? So in front of you, you've got some definitions that you can relate to the picture of the model that we have in front of us. And it says that uh, this is a model to demonstrate how a system can be set up to generate pollution-free energy with little or no cost to the environment. So we will refer to this as the clean energy system. And this system is so called because it is an assemblage of parts. And there is a relationship between these parts and they work together and as, as they work together they form an entity or a whole that definition of course coming from your IB syllabus and um, a model is a simplified description designed to show the structure or workings of a system or a concept and that's our second definition that comes out of our syllabus so here we have got uh, a model because it's not the actual clean energy system that you would use out there to generate uh, uh, hydrogen or to generate electricity for your home using a solar panel but what it is it's a miniature version of that which makes it something that you can use to describe uh, the workings of this bigger thing which is the system and that makes this smaller thing a very good physical or hardware model and it does an excellent job of showing how the bigger system works making it a very good model. Let's now spend some time and look at some of the processes going on within our clean energy system. So the input into our system is 80 watts of power and that's light energy that's coming from those two 80 watt bulbs which have 80 watts of power uh, that light energy is being transferred to the solar cells which are in the solar panel right about here which is what we define a transfer as a process which does not involve a change of form or state but simply a movement so the energy is moving from the light bulb to the solar panel another component of our model and uh, this is an input distilled water and there is a flow there is a flow of electricity from the solar panel into this area here that's known as the electrolyzer and at that electrolyzer what you have happening is electricity is used to split water into hydrogen and oxygen so the gases flow from the electrolyzer to the storage tank and then to the proton exchange membrane. This right here is our proton exchange membrane. And it is here that there are some electrochemical processes going on on the PEM, which produce electricity. And then water is formed and water is described as an output. But the bigger and more significant output that we have here is the output of electricity as it powers and rotates a motor. Let's take a general look now at some systems and understand uh, some of the differences uh, among three kinds of systems. And uh, for additional reading on this, uh, you can refer to your textbook, page four. But just looking at your three diagrams, they speak for themselves that, that you have three kinds of system. And uh, in one, the isolated system here, uh, you find that there's no exchange of matter or energy. And uh, it's really hard to find any isolated system. 
because you can't really think of anything, even a vacuum, that does not exchange matter or energy with the external environment. Perhaps the, the only true isolated system is the universe itself, and of course that is something that uh, we don't really have a complete understanding of. So it's really a system that's, that stands uh, by itself with nothing to exchange matter or energy with, meaning that the universe is technically the only example of an isolated system. Then, of course, we can have closed systems, and, and we'll meet lots of examples of closed systems which uh, close themselves off from any exchange of matter, but there's still an exchange of energy with the outside, and the most common kind of system uh, in environmental uh, systems and societies would be, of course, the open system. And uh, that's the one where you have both the exchange of matter and energy. And, uh, for instance, uh, an ecosystem which has uh, energy from the sun coming in to allow photosynthesis by the producers and then carbon dioxide from the air coming in, that's your exchange of matter and energy right there. But let's consider a system like this one here, how we would classify this system. Before we make our choice, let's ensure that we understand everything the diagram shows us. Uh, it is placed beneath a source of light. The top part of the container is completely sealed. So what does that make this system? Does it make it a closed system, an open system, or an isolated system? Think about it and make your choice. And if your choice is closed system, then you're totally right because this system gets energy from the outside, it gets heat, it gets light, you can shake it and, and vibrate it and cause mixing, but there's not going to be any matter going into the system, although you can give energy to that system. So that makes it a closed system, one that exchanges energy, the red arrow, but does not exchange matter, the green arrow. Let's go back to our model and in keeping with our definition of a model it's a simplified description and the clean energy model could be presented as the hardware model that we have looked at so far but that does not mean that we can't present it as a diagram which technically would be a model because a model is a simplified description that shows the structures and working of a system so if we had this diagram here then we could call it a model of the clean energy system and uh, I would like you to recall the parts of this model and to identify them. Then I would like you to compare this model with the physical model that we have and to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of the two models. How efficient is this transfer of energy? This transfer does not involve a change of form or a change of state. And that is what makes it a transfer as opposed to a transformation, which if you did have a change of form or state, then it would become a transformation. So it's just a transfer of, of energy. And then you have a transformation where this light energy becomes electrical energy and it flows. But how much power actually flows and to do that we could connect a multimeter like we have done here in these two little pictures on the side and get readings for current and voltage to give us a simple understanding of the amount of power that gets transmitted from the panel by multiplying volts by amps and when we multiply those we should get 0 0.29 watts which means that we're well on the way to creating a quantitative model for energy flow in the clean energy system. Moving down to the final part of this system, we would find that the current and voltage could be measured out of the proton exchange membrane. And uh, that's the point that transfers energy to the fan. And we see that the, the voltage is 0.837 and the current is 0.20. So your job is to find out the, what's the power here using the formula that we had in the previous uh, example. 
And then you would be ready to go ahead and fill out a complete diagram like this one here showing the amount of power that goes in and then the amount that gets transferred to the electrolyzer and then the amount that comes out of the PEM, the proton exchange membrane. And you would have a quantitative diagram and you might want to reflect on on ways to improve this quantification. Are there any other quantities that you can think about putting in? Any other values for energy that you might want to, to put in at different points in, in the system? And now that we have our information about the flow of energy within the system, it puts us in a position to use the clean energy model to see how it conforms to the first and second laws of thermodynamics. And then let's now use the model to demonstrate the laws of thermodynamics. And what are these laws of thermodynamics? Matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. And then, of course, the second law, which says that in all energy exchanges, if no energy enters or leaves the system, the potential energy of the state will always be less than that of the initial state which, put simply, means that an ordered system or something that's nicely packaged as it gets transferred along the line of, of a system, the energy tends to get dissipated or converted into different forms. And we see that the level of disorder or entropy increases over time within a given system. We can see that these 80 watts of power need to therefore be accounted for in some way and we can r r quickly realize that the system as it is modeled here isn't a very efficient system because this amount of energy isn't destroyed but it has to be dissipated in some way so the 80 watts of power that is generated by the two light bulbs ends up only transferring a, a small amount of that to the motor at the end and a lot of that energy because it's not able to be destroyed, it has to be accounted for in some way, and it's just dissipated. And, and that, of course, is the fact that the energy is not created or destroyed. That's the first law. But the idea that it, there's so much losses and scattering of this energy as it gets transferred along this, what is basically a chain, uh, is in keeping with the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy. And uh, what I would like you to do also, and now that you have the model in front of you, is to identify again all the transfers, transformations, stocks, and flows, and then test your understanding of the first law, the second law, and all of these transfers, transformations, stocks, and flows by looking at this animation here and then applying all of these terms uh, to it. So what you'll be doing is looking to see how this animation conforms to the first and second laws. What are the transfers, the transformations, the stocks, and the flows that you observe? And this in itself, is this a model? Is this a system? What kind of a model is this? Is it a quantitative model? How good is this model that we're looking at? Is it a model that, uh, that has its shortcomings, as, as all models do? What are some strengths? and weaknesses of this model here, which by the way is a model that we will be using to introduce our next section on ecosystems. So by all means, uh, spend some time, look at the model, and uh, apply all of these concepts to it as you analyze it. And then finally, it will bring us to the next unit, and uh, we will be looking, of course, not to forget about the whole idea of modeling, and quantitative models as and, and the laws of thermodynamics. So we will want to look at goldfish and how efficient are goldfish at uh, converting the food that you give them into actual body mass. Suppose you were a fish farmer, you'd certainly want to know uh, how much fish you get for how much food you pay for. And it's a valid thing to want to quantify this efficiency of conversion of food into body mass for something like fish. And it's something that we will investigate uh, 
and we will quantify and we will therefore be able to make a quantitative model so that is where we would be going with our class time when we get to class uh, going through uh, all of the questions that you had earlier and then discussing how we would go about this research project and then of course we would be expected to apply all of the concepts in this here after you've read your textbook.